Good morning, Facebook followers. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that we get a few more people. Um, today we're gonna to talk about entertainment during the gold rush and how people who came to California needed to be risk takers. So I'm gonna wait just a few moments to see if anyone joins us as we are live. Uh, my name is Amber and I will be taking off my mask because I'm in an exhibit all by myself. Um, but we are trying to work hard here at Columbia State Historic Park to flatten the curve and to make sure that we're all safe. So you will see me take off my mask in just a moment, um, but there is no other visitors in the building or staff. So again, my name is Amber Stegner and today I get to share with you a little bit about entertainment during the gold rush. Please feel free to ask questions. Um, this is our bowling alley and saloon that was just renovated here in town and you can come and actually play bowling and during the weekend sometimes we'll have volunteers showing you how to play gold rush gambling games so this was a town of 20,000 people in 1853 and it was the largest one of the largest gold rush towns in California we think it was the fourth largest and the miners here worked hard and they came from every walk of life and from around the world and when they got here, they expected to be able to just trip over the gold and get rich and go home. These people were adventure seekers, many of them really comfortable. And they came here to see what they could do in making themselves money and changing their lives forever in escaping religious persecution, oftentimes in finding love. And this was a place that mostly was male in 1850. So they say that there were 100 men to one woman in Gold Rush, California. Uh, welcome, Rhiannon's mom from Toll House, California. Thanks for joining us live. Um, today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about entertainment during the Gold Rush, one of my favorite things. So I wanted to start with a quote uh, from the Gold Rush and it's from Mark Twain, who you all might know a little bit about. Mark Twain did not come to Columbia, but he was in Angel's Camp. And one of his favorite quotes about gambling is, a dollar picked up in the road is more satisfying to you than 99 which you had to work for, and money won at Pharaoh or in stock snuggles into your heart in the same way. So this was a place, as I said, where people struck it rich. And when they did, they worked very hard Monday through Saturday, and on Sundays it was their day to recreate. So many people uh, in town would spend their time in the gambling halls and saloons. In the 1860s, there were over 60 saloons here in Gold Rush, Columbia. And the, good morning to uh, near La Quinta, near Palm Springs. Patrice, Patricia, sorry, thank you for joining us. And Christina Weaver, good morning. Um, this was a town that never slept. It was a place where you could hear the rolling of bowling balls and change your fortune overnight with the toss of a coin. Gold Rush miners were young and adventurous. They had energy still in their blood at the end of a hard work day to come into town and entertain themselves. They loved dramatic entertainment and spent their evenings in the saloons and bowling um, bowling was a gambling game here in Gold Rush, Columbia. They also amused themselves attending lectures and theaters. Good morning, Nancy. Thanks for joining us. So people came from around the world and they brought with them the things that they like to do to entertain themselves. And so I'm going to show you a few things here in the saloon um, that they use to entertain themselves in Gold Rush, California. But first I want to talk a little bit about gold. So people came here with this idea that they would just stumble over big pieces of gold and that they would roll down the hillsides and gold would just stick to them. And during the gold rush from 1848 to 1852, you can find travel letters from around the world telling people just that. So people closed up their shops. They left their sons and daughters at home. Sons left their mothers and fathers at home. And by the time you were 12 or 14 here in the gold rush, you were an adult. Good morning. Um, thank you for joining us, Larry from Bristol, Indiana. So this was the largest piece of gold found in Columbia between 1850 and 1860. 
and it's a piece of gold that is less than a pound and a half. So most of the gold here was placer gold. It was found in small pieces. It did not stick to you. There wasn't something called gold grease. You did not just trip over the gold. The gold was about this size, and it took a lot to get one ounce of gold. You also had to pay the water company because this was a dry diggings. So people were working and living here, toiling for this small amount of gold and then coming into town and spending it overnight. So with that, let me show you our bowling alley because it's pretty cool. One of the only indoor bowling alleys in Gold Rush, Columbia still left. You can come and bowl here. And during the Gold Rush, you would have had a game that was bet on. So this was a betting game and the scoreboards are actually on the wall. But during the Gold Rush, the rolling on the bowling alley never leaves off for 10 consecutive minutes at any time during the entire 24 hour mining period. It is a favorite amusement in the mines. And the only difference is that Sunday makes it go on for 24 hours and leave off for not one minute. There were six bowling alleys here in Columbia. This is the scoreboard and how you would keep score. And some of the rules of the game, to play cock top bowling, there were three pins and they are set up in a triangular pattern known to the modern bowler as one, seven, and 10 pin position. Players took turns rolling the ball down the alley and knocking over as many pins as possible. Every player uses three balls per frame and there are 10 frames per game. Each pin counts as one point and if knocked over, they get a point. Knocking all three pins over means that you have a called a strike. And this was a game that was played by men during the gold rush, not children. Another, a couple of important games during the gold rush. You have over and under, the beginnings of over and under that we play today. And this is high or low. And cheating, of course, was an integral part of gold rush gambling. Dealers cheated by secretly making cards that they know uh, the value of, manipulating the order of the cards using sleight of hand, using mirrors to see the other cards, or lying about what cards have already been played. And so they, so they actually used an apparatus similar to this to keep track of count cards and cart counting cards. Let's show you a couple of other cool things while we're here. Let's see if we have any comments that you guys want to ask about. If you have things you would like to know about, please chime in. I'd be happy to answer you. Um, so this is our gambling board. And cards during the gold rush did not have writing on them. They came from the Spanish tradition, most of the cards that came here and they had 40 in a deck. They adopted 52 fairly early. And that's what Gold Rush cards looked like in the 1850s. Very often, they used markers as well. So with that, we're gonna talk a little bit about other forms of entertainment. Of course, liquor was a huge piece during the Gold Rush and things came from around the world. So although we did have a couple of saloons, we didn't have a large number of them here in town. I'm gonna show you a couple of other things behind our bar so you can kind of see what life was like here in the saloons of the 1850s. And as I said, people joined us from around the world, just as they do today. We get about half a million visitors a year. Sorry for the wobble. And um, we get a chance to talk a little bit about entertainment and the town of Columbia. 
So this is the town of Columbia in the 1850s. And as I said, it had almost 20,000 people, all seeking some form of entertainment. The Columbia Brewery was one of the biggest breweries here in town, owned by Anton Bixel and his wife. Oops, excuse me. Anne Marie Bixel. And they own the Columbia Brewery. I'm going to show you their label. And Columbia had three to six breweries, depending on the time frame. Uh, they did grow all their hops in the valley, and they also produced a champagne. They were known for a black beer or a dark beer where they mixed beers together. And as I said, there were people from around the world exploring Colombia and the mines around Colombia, making their living on gold, but gambling it away overnight. And here's a quote about the different nationalities that were here. Many nationalities contributed to the color and romance of the town. Bullfights and fandangos from Mexico and Spain, music from Italy, gay dancers from France, Sanger fests from Germany, Yankee wit matching Irish humor, Oriental mysticism flickering against the vivid black ground of our Aboriginal abandon and superstition. The stage is set, the cast is chosen, on we play. So during the gold rush, of course, they did a lot of gambling, but they also spent a lot of time in theater performances. Um, they had a circus here in 1852. That's a photo of the circus poster. They had a bear and bull fight almost monthly with, uh, this one was with Senorita Ramona Perez, which was a woman bullfighter. They oftentimes had minstrel shows. They did um, many different theater performances. Addie Chapman and Caroline Chapman were both important stage performers. Casno Theater was a huge theater in Gold Rush, Columbia, and entertainment was a nightly occurrence. Sarsaparilla, someone asked, what's the story on Sarsaparilla? Sarsaparilla was a gold rush drink. It was similar to root beer, and it came uh, from the West Indies, actually. And then they sweetened it, and um, miners liked it, but really it was something that they drank during the day. It has a lot of caffeine and a lot of sugar, so it helped with energy, but wasn't something they generally drank at night unless it was mixed with alcohol. A couple of photos, this is Lola Montez. She was a performer here during the gold rush. She created the spider dance. It was a lively dance. You can actually Google it online and check out. It was very risque for the 1850s. So women who came here had different opportunities than the men and they could actually change their stature. Many of them coming here for freedom they could own and operate their own businesses. And we did have a few women bar owners. Uh, and then we also had women who operated boarding houses and houses of ill repute. So these were all different ways in which women could change their status in life and change their fortune here in Gold Rush, Columbia. So I wanna thank you for visiting today and learning a little bit about Gold Rush entertainment. I am just about ready to finish up, but I'm going to look through our comments and make sure someone else doesn't have a great comment or question that they'd like to know about. So lastly, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us for Entertainment in the Mines. This is a place where people's fortunes were made and lost overnight in the gambling halls and streets of Columbia. Thanks for coming today. Have a great day, and I hope to see you again next week at 10 a.m., for our History Live, 10 minutes of history in the back streets of Columbia.